Hi, welcome to Enchiridion. Among the hidden depths of the ocean lay mysterious and rare creatures seen by man by chance. Among these there are creatures such as the frilled shark, the giant spider crab, the Atlantic wolfish, giant two worms, the fangtooth fish, the six gill shark, the vampire squid, and the Pacific Viperfish. These are just some of the many creatures waiting to be unveiled by man to contribute to the development of deep sea exploration for scientific or commercial purposes. One of these creatures is exceptionally bizarre, a rare shark species equipped with ampullae of Lorenzini, capable of detecting electric fields by prey and reaching up to almost 20 feet in length, as well as being very stealthy which we will explore in detail in this new two-part series documentary of the Aquarium. So, what is the taxonomy and history of the goblin shark? What is its phylogeny and evolution? What is the description of this shark? Which is its distribution and habitat? And what about its biology and ecology? These are just some of the questions we'll explore in this two-part video series. The goblin shark, one of the rarest species of deep sea shark, and also called a living fossil, as it is the only extent, or members of a group that are still alive, of the family Mitscaridinidae, an 125 million year old lineage. And what about Mitscaridinidae? Well, they include genera such as Anomatodon, Scapanorhynchus, and Wolstenia, and are characterized by a long, trowel shaped beak-like snout, relatively much larger than other sharks. And what's so cool about them? A cool aspect is the fact that its long snout is covered with ampullae of Lorenzini, which we will get to later in this video. They have extensive, protrusible jaws. When the jaws are retracted, the shark resembles a grey nurse shark with a long nose. Its nose resembles the nose of a goblin, which is the origin of its name. Similarly, they're named for their likeness to mythical goblins that appear in Japanese folklore. Since their discovery in 1898, these sharks have only been seen around 50 times, give or take, similar to the Megamouth Sharks' rarity, with only over 60 sightings since its discovery in 1976. It is a bubblegum, pink-skinned beast known for its flattened, elongated snout and highly protrusible jaws packed with nail fang-like teeth. It is usually between 10 and 13 feet when mature, though a specimen reached 18 to 20 feet in length, rivaling the great white shark at also around 20 feet in length, maximum. They inhabit upper continental slopes or continental margin, which is a shallow water area found in proximity to continents. They also inhabit submarine canyons, which is a steep-sided valley cut into the seabed of the continental slope, and seamounts, which are a large geologic landform that is from the ocean floor, but doesn't reach the water's surface or sea level, at depths greater than 330 feet, with adults found deeper than juveniles. Its features include a flabby, chubby body and small fins, which leads scientists to believe that it is quite sluggish in nature. Its long snout is covered with ampullae of Lorenzini, like Midscarinidae, that enable it to sense minute electric fields produced by nearby prey, which it can snatch up by swiftly extending its flexible jaws. And what in the world are ampullae of Lorenzini? They are special sensing organs called the electroreceptors, capable of perceiving natural electrical stimuli, forming a network of jelly-filled pores. This organ is also found in chondrostei, a group of primarily cartilaginous fish like sturgeon and reed fish. These sensory organs help the creatures equipped with them to sense electric fields in the water. Each ampulla is composed of a jelly-filled canal opening to the surface by a pore, or organ used to detect movement, vibration, and pressure gradients in the skin. They are mostly clustered into groups within the body each cluster having ampullae connecting with different parts of the skin, 
yet preserving symmetry. The ampullae pores are visible as dark spots in the skin, providing creatures with an additional sensor capable of detecting electric and magnetic fields as well as temperature gradients. Ampullae pick up weak electrical impulses living fish and animals give off whenever a muscle contracts. This built-in homing device allows goblin sharks to track down prey. After tracking down prey, its retractable jaw provides the quick draw action necessary to seize it. This species hunts for its heliost fishes, cephalopods such as squids and octopi, and crustaceans both near the seafloor or seabed, which is the bottom of the ocean and in the middle of the water column. Small numbers of goblin sharks are unintentionally caught by deepwater fisheries. The IUCN, or International Union for Conservation of Nature, has assessed it as least concern, despite its rarity, citing its wide distribution and low incidence of capture. In an 1898 issue of Proceedings of the California Academy of Sciences, American ichthyologist David Starr Jordan, or one who studies fish, described the goblin shark as a new species, genus, and family. He based this on his account of an immature 3.5-foot-long male caught in Sagami Bay near Yokohama, Japan. The specimen had been acquired by naturalist and shipmaster Alan Osten, who gave it to Professor Kakichi Mitsukuri at the University of Tokyo who brought it to Jordan. Following this, he named the shark Mitzkarina Austoni, in honor of these two men. When the shark was first discovered, researchers realized that they had seen goblin sharks before, and where? In fossil remains. After Jordan's description was published, multiple scientists also noted the similarity between Mitzkarina and the extinct Mesozoic shark, Scapanorhynchus. Scapanorhynchus is an extinct genus of shark that lived from the early Cretaceous until possibly the Miocene and is extremely similar to the goblin shark with an elongated flattened snout and sharp teeth useful for seizing fish up to around 10 feet long. For this reason, goblin sharks are now considered living fossils, though greatly overhyped. The goblin shark's body structure was perfected for survival. Some scientists even consider reclassifying it as Scapanorhynchus austoni. But eventually, more complete fossils revealed multiple anatomical differences between Scapanorhynchus and the goblin shark. For a time, there was a taxonomic confusion due to specimens' jaws fixed at varying degrees of protrusion during presentation, leading some scientists to believe that they were distinct species when they were in fact the same. Phylogenetic studies based on morphology have usually classified the goblin shark as the most basal or primitive of the order Lamniforms, also known as the mackerel sharks. Lamniforms includes a diverse group of sharks, such as the great white shark, as well as the megamouth shark, with specific characteristics. Genetic studies have also confirmed a primitive classification for the species due to these primitive traits the goblin shark has been described as a living fossil. The family Mitzcarinidae, known for Mitzcaruna, Scapanorhynchus, and Anomatodon, dates back to the Cretaceous period 125 to 113 million years ago. And with that, thank you for watching. See you on next week's episode where we will conclude this two-part series. This is Enchiridion. See you next time.